what we want to do is frizz it up. So you're going to get one of these, just get a string, a line of it, and pull it apart like that. And Folks in the backyard, had a little bit of snow. It is early December. It's going to take a look. It's a jute twine. I had a little short earlier just showing that, but really, this is something you should have probably in your camp bag. We'll have a look at that. Got a little distracted by some kind of a rabbit or a squirrel over there to the corner of my eye. Maybe the neighbor's cat. Can't really tell. One of the reasons I like to have this in the camp bag. It's got a lot of uses. It's not super strong, but you know what? You could use lots of it. It's cheap. It's a natural cordage. It's just this twisted line. When I smell that, it reminds me of back when I was on the farm. Um, you know, baler twine in the old days was probably made of pretty much the same thing, a little bit thicker. And uh, that could do lots of fun stuff too, but definitely you're going to be able to uh, fray this up. And I'll take a closer look. If it's split at the ends, I like to work with a shorter piece. I'll take this piece after and get that good and frizzy, like you're having a really bad hair day. You know, you know the days I'm talking about. We get that all frizzed up. We'll take a closer look. We're going to be able to light that up. So handy to have in your bag and it can do other things. But we're going to look at the fire starting because I've been doing a series on some beginner campfire or beginner fire starting. My bum here today. Dry. And uh, maybe we don't know how to get dry kindling. Well, we might be able to dry some out actually. If uh, in our camp bag we were uh, carrying around some jute twine, which has so many other uses. Uh, but I'll just stuff that in my pocket for now. My bag, it might be dry. And here, I'm going to split some stuff down, but it's wet. And uh, a lot of the moisture is going to get trapped up underneath this. And on the inside, sure, it's going to be dry, but I might not know how to deal with that. So I might be able to dry out some of this wet stuff. Yeah, I'm going to use my jute twine. I think I have the back of it here. Well, let's not burn my earbuds, folks. So what we want to do is frizz it up. So you're going to get one of these, just get a string, a line of it pull it apart like that and so this is where getting your knife out might be handy. I'll just take a big ball of this because we want to make a bird's nest here and uh, so just grab that, give that a cut. I'm just trying to keep this dry. It's already wet enough out here in the snow so what I would do if I was making this uh, and I hadn't had a pre-prepared little nest of that is get anywhere from uh, Maybe four uh, to ten inches, twelve inches. Well, I find it better for me on the shorter amounts and just pull it apart. Like Take your time. There's really no rush on this uh, unless you're cold and your hands are shaking, I guess. And if you have a lot of friends, get them out there doing it too. And uh, frizz that up, okay? And you're gonna want to frizz that up so you have a little ball like that. A little frizzy ends here, like when you're having a bad hair day, I mentioned earlier. They're uh, what's going to catch you. They're going to catch a spark. It's like when you start your tinder, you need that light stuff to catch the spark. You're not going to a big full size tree and just striking a match to that. Uh, although that could light up depending on the conditions. Normally, when you've got a great big log and you put a little piece of paper to it, it just goes out. Um, so we want these little pieces. So think of this as like super tinder. And again, we're just using this because everything else around might be wet. We're not sure how to get it dry. Uh, we're in a hurry so you could get a lot of this stuff frizzed up and uh, pass it around to friends if you have it if not i'd say get i don't know six to eight of these lengths kind of frizzed up and kind of fuzzy but be careful they could blow away and then what i'm doing with that is tucking it into this nest now there's still moisture on that pizza tray i can feel it wet so this is going to soak some of that up and even the ferro rod might take a few strikes just to dry some of that out but i want that frizzy bad hair end and then with this stuff, I kind of want to tuck it in there because this is going to be the fuel uh, for our little mini fire uh, so we can dry a few things out. So I want to strike that once there's a bit of a flame. Then I'm going to add some of my wet stuff here just from the ends if I can because I'm sitting in the big backyard here and uh, it's actually not legal for me to start a fire, although I can cook. So I have a hot dog ready at hand. If, Asks, although I'm not going to eat it because it's sitting in my pocket. Uh, 
gathering pocket mint. But, you know, you do what you do. That's the life of a uh, you know, bushcrafter in the backyard. So we've got it frizzy, kind of matted up there. I'm sorry I was doing all the work away from you, but I want to make that nest and just kind of pop it in there so it can catch a spark. And then these bigger ends, again, are like my bigger fuel. And also, they'll give it a bit of padding if this has got some moisture. So say there's some snow here. What I'm going to do is actually expose more of the fizzy stuff on the top here. I pushed it down to part of the snow. But I don't want it to blow away. And I want that raft underneath there to keep it away from the moisture because this stuff just... And your wood will too. Soaks it right up. Let's get that in there. There we go. Now, once that's going, this down. That's when I might try to take some of this wet wood, just from the ends, and see. I cannot dry that out or not. You may not. You got to be careful when it's wet. You could just smother your whole fire. But this is the whole point of all this, right? Is to I get an actual fire going. I'm not going to set a whole proper fire here. My neighbors will probably call the fire department. Well, thanks for joining me in the backyard and uh, watching me get a wet bum and play with the fire starter. Work with some jute. Just another way to get something started that's wet see from the flame it'll start up but you're still going to need some dry fuel and or a really big pile of jute which can work for itself perhaps having some of that in some oil or in uh, whatever other kind of accelerant would help that last a little longer be a lot like a candle actually because you really have to dry out the wood and it doesn't take much even just a little bit of snow and everything's wet, it's gonna take longer to light. So having a little bit of a dry starter in your bag doesn't hurt. And that's something that's multifunctional. Thanks for all the views. And I hope you guys get out there and have some fun too. And to see more winter stuff coming up. Well, it's winter here. We've hit December and it's pretty much winter till April. Time for the long winter or whatever they say in that movie. I'm Jay, this is my big backyard. Thanks for coming along. One of the reasons I like to have this in the camp bag, it's got a lot of uses. It's not super strong, but you know what? You can use lots of it. It's cheap. It's a natural cordage. It's just this twisted line. When I smell that, it reminds me of back when I was on the farm. What we want to do is frizz it up. So you're going to get one of these, just get a string, a line of it, and pull it apart like that. And 